This is Mark Weber. This is business. And success is always in fashion. What is a noble profession? I've given some thought to that. I've always been respectful of the fashion, luxury, and retail industry. It's a noble calling. We're off in the line, and with good reason. Runway shows seem so frivolous. The people attending them seem, I don't know, you put a word to it. Some of them are celebrities, some of them are made up celebrities. We often are maligned, but nevertheless, this is a serious industry that employs people throughout the world. And not just employs people. This industry gives future, gives hope, gives education, and gives life to so many careers and people in some of the far-fetched places around the world. I've often traveled to these parts of the world and I've always been pleased and overjoyed, frankly, to see how people have made a life for themselves in our industry. Tough call. They're so different. Mm. <laughs> Something funny? No. No, 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 nothing's, you know, it's just the both those belts look exactly the same to me, you know, I'm still learning about this stuff and, uh... <laughs> this stuff? Oh, okay, I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. You go to your closet and you select, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back, but what you don't know is that that sweater is not just blue, it's not turquoise, it's not lapis, it's actually cerulean. And you're also blithely unaware of the fact that in 2002, Oscar de la Renta did a collection of cerulean gowns, and then I think it was Yves Saint Laurent, wasn't it, who showed cerulean military jackets? I think we need a jacket here. Mm. And then Cerulean quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers. And then it uh, filtered down through the department stores and then trickled on down into some tragic casual corner where you no doubt fished it out of some clearance bin. However, that blue represents millions of dollars and countless jobs. And it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when in fact, you're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. There's a famous Chinese philosopher, Lao Tzu, who said, give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime. This industry teaches skills to people in the United States and all over the world. We teach them to sew, we teach them to make our products, and these skills are forever. The luxury and fashion and apparel industry is a forever industry. And it's a noble profession, and for that I'm grateful to be involved. But when you think about noble professions, there's nothing more noble than the world of medicine and being a doctor. Doctors give life, they give comfort, they extend life, they make it easier for people to navigate through the difficulties of being human. It's a noble profession. And with that as a backdrop, I'm very excited tonight to introduce you to my guest, Dr. Taryn Rose, a multiple threat. Doctor, surgeon, entrepreneur, businesswoman, designer, and a creator of her own world of fashion with a major lifestyle brand called Taryn Rose. And with that, welcome aboard. Thank you, Mark. I'm so happy to be here. So now what do I call you? Do I call you Dr. Rose? What, what should I call you? <laughs> well, my parents will insist that you call me doctor, but um, please call me Taryn. Well, at least they're not in the audience, so I will call you Taryn. <laughs> yes. Thank you, thank you. Taryn's a beautiful name. Where is it derived from? Thank you. Well, I'm from Vietnam originally. I came here as a refugee, so when ah. it was time to get my citizenship, I was able to change my name. And I read a lot of novels as I was a, a kid, and there was a name in one of the novels that I really gravitated towards because it was very pretty but strong at the same time. So I named myself Taryn. 
Oh, great. Great. I love it. It's a pretty name. You're right. And it's unusual. You don't hear it very often. Exactly. And the rose? Rose is thanks to my first husband. <laughs> I've had How many two. Are there? Yes, two? He's ex number yeah. one. Um, are so, you with number two now? No, I'm divorced from number two. Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you're still smiling. That's a good thing. Yes. Maybe that's why I'm still smiling. Which is better, married or single? <laughs> um, I think being um, in a relationship that is deep and meaningful is the best, whether you're married or not. It's uh, the individual's choice. I am engaged, so um, well, I have a, a very long distance relationship. He's Italian and lives in Italy, so we go back and forth. Oh, well, gee whiz. I don't even <laughs> want to go there. So, Dr. Taryn Rose, how did you become a doctor? Well, my father insisted that I become a doctor because he's a doctor, and uh -huh. I am the firstborn of four girls, so I was anointed to be the one to lead the way. And so he raised me always to take care of my little sisters whenever they had a cut or something. I was the one that w would take care of them. And what um, kind of doctor was he? He um, started as a family practitioner, and then when we came to the U.S., he retrained uh, as a pathologist. Which is, for um, our less the, <laughs> than genius audience. is the study of um, disease and tissue, and um, they do autopsies. Uh, I like to say that you know they they study de dead people. Oh, uh, <laughs> and did you intend to be a pathologist or general practitioner as well? No, you know he became a pathologist only because he was concerned about discrimination, of um, of being face to face with patients. So he thought it would be easier to go into a field where you're not dealing directly with patients. But I have to say he regretted that at the end of his career. Um, when he went back to patient care, and he really loved it. He's he's a great um, patient care type of doctor. And your other three sisters, did they follow in the footsteps of medical? Well, my second sister did uh, become an OBGYN. Um, but That's a uh, baby doctor. Yes, yes. Yes. Is that what that is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> she uh, takes care of women and um, their reproductive needs. So it's not necessarily a baby doctor. No, that's a pediatrician. Thank so you. OBGYN is when you take care of women. I, yeah. I admit, you know, what do I know about this stuff? <laughs> okay, got it. It's nothing else I could make believe I understand it, but at least the audience is getting an education. Yes, yes. So she became this? Yes, so she's a practicing OBGYN. Oh, very nice. And my um, two youngest um, sisters, they went to um, public health. So one worked at UNICEF for, for 10 years, and now she's back in the U.S. after traveling all around the world. Wow, what a nice family. Yes. And then the fourth one actually started a boutique. Did you ever find <laughs> discrimination? Um, I would say that I found discrimination more as a woman. So um, my story not was... Not from being from... From Vietnam? Not so much. Maybe I was just oblivious to it, but I, I can't say I'm glad you were oblivious to it. That's better yeah. than feeling it, right? <laughs> right, right. So how as a woman? Should mm -hmm. I ask that question? Well, when I was applying for my residency in orthopedics, um, there were three men that... Um, wrote a letter to the chairman saying that he should not accept me. And one of the reasons was that I wore my skirts too short. It was fashion. You know? I so, and because my skirts oh my were too short, I was a distraction, so they didn't want me there. But to, but to one of the author's credit, three years later, he came up to me after he worked with me for three months, and he said, I have to apologize to you that I did that because... You're, because I'm a mutant. Oh, well, he said, you know, you're one of the best hardworking residents I've ever worked with. So, That's great. But he never, he didn't have to tell me that. So I, I thought at the time that he was really quite mature to admit that he did that and that he was sorry. If you're tuning in right now, this is Mark Weber. This is Always in Fashion. And I'm discussing a career right now, a noble career, with Dr. Taryn Rose, designer Taryn Rose, entrepreneur and creator extraordinaire. So when you were a little girl and you were told you're going to be a doctor, were you a genius? Were you a brainiac? You know, I never label myself anything. Um, I certainly didn't go around uh, saying, oh, I'm smart. But... You know, I was in the gifted program. I always got straight A's. Um, so, so looking back, yes, you know, I'm always I was, curious when people are successful mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. obviously smart. You're a doctor. You're a surgeon. 
do they feel it? When I was young, I, I felt special in that I felt, I grew up in humble beginnings. I grew up in the yeah. city projects in New York, and as I say in my books, I wasn't supposed to have this career. Yes. You know, I just wasn't. But nonetheless, in my heart of hearts, I felt I had a chance. I never thought I was very smart, I just thought I had a chance. So I'm curious, when, you, when people are successful, do they know they're intelligent? Well, I thought that what I was doing was normal, uh, for one, but I do feel that being here in, in America, there is that sense of you have a chance, and that's what's so wonderful ab about America. Um, it's still that openness to something completely new, and I hope strongly that we're able to preserve that. You know, I, I am not necessarily a Democrat or Republican, although if people listen to the show, I think they'll get the gist on which side I sit. Having said that, I was an admirer of President Obama, although I must admit a number of his policies, or maybe many of them I didn't agree with. Right. But one time he was speaking and he said, in this country, everyone should get a shot. And I never forgot that. And it meant so much to me. And I've talked about it a number of times on the radio. Everyone should get a shot. I think that's one of the things that make us great. Absolutely. And I really do hope that we are able to preserve that. And coming here as a refugee, I'm so grateful for the people who open their arms and their homes to all of us that um, I... I see now, researching, that there were many people at that time who were completely against it. And um, I even, surprisingly, our current governor, Jerry Brown, who's quite left, if you think about it, was against it at that time. I so, think he's over left. I think <laughs> yeah. we've run out of left for Jerry Brown. So you're, you're a young lady, you decide to go to medical school, and you become what kind of doctor? I became an orthopedic surgeon, but I didn't go to medical school with that in mind. My you never plan. practiced before you decided you wanted to go in another five years, is it? Well, I didn't practice, and so the education system is after undergrad, you go to medical school, you received your MD, and then from there you are required to do additional training as an intern and a resident. So I chose a, a longer route, uh, five years. How long total in school, at college and onward? Oh my gosh, so what is that? Uh, Twelve years. <laughs> That's commitment. <laughs> yes, thirteen years actually, yeah. Can, that, can, can, can doctors with all the regulations mm -hmm. still make money? Yes, they they make a comfortable life. Of course, it's not the they same as They used to be the richest people be. in the country. Yes, they're no, no more. No, no longer. Um, is that right? I don't know if if right or wrong is the right adjective. I think that they deserve a lot more than many of them are being compensated mm -hmm. for. Um, so, you know, when you are sick, you really learn to appreciate the, the gift of what a doctor can provide of course. to make you better. So I think as a society, we need to, one, embrace and value health and as much as possible, the, the right to good health for everyone. Yeah. You know, I... We have a CEO president right now, and whether you like him or not, I admire the fact that he's trying to follow through on the things that he said he would. We could all argue about it, and certainly his style, and I've met him. In fact, I don't know if you know this, when he went in the fashion business with yes. the Donald Trump, I did the negotiation with him. Oh, okay. In fact, if you were to read my book, Always in Fashion, chapter 17 is dedicated to Donald Trump. But the point is, he's trying to make these changes. And if you think about it, this show dedicated to business and careers, police officers, firemen, doctors, they should be some of the most wealthy people in the country. I, I don't know how we can fix this. I'm hoping he gets around to it. I don't know. Back to you. So you become a successful surgeon. You operated on people? 
Yeah, absolutely. You a didn't lot of faint people, when you saw blood? No, I loved it, actually. My favorite part of being an orthopedic sur surgeon was the actual surgery. I didn't like a, a lot of the administrative stuff mm -hmm. that you have to do, but the surgery itself was just so fascinating. Um, it's like going into space every time because, yes, you study what the anatomy is, but everyone is could, could have an anomaly. Um, and the body responds differently to different techniques Amazing. each time. And w what part of the body did you focus on? It was all extremities and, and, and extremities. also the spine. So legs, arms, hands, feet. Aren't are there usually specialists for each one of those categories? Uh, well, you're first a generalist, so you're trained to do all areas and then you can subspecialize. So I actually loved the hand. I was very good under the microscope, so I could what one nurse asked me one day, how do you sit there for eight hours with hardly moving? Because we were sewing back nerves and vessels with thread that's less than your hair. My so goodness. it was all under the microscope. And so all movements were very slight and small. Wow. And, um, and you make people's hands work again in that regard? Yes, yes. In fact, my... Most memorable case was when a man accidentally chopped off his arm. Oh, gee whiz. And I was on call that night and led the team to doing the replant. And you made it work again? Yes. Perfectly? Well, he wasn't playing the piano again, but he could hold a beer. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, so that was a very special case because that was the first replant that I did as the lead because those cases take eight to 12 hours because you have to sew everything back. And, and so I, I reattached the bone. You wear special glasses and goggles to make everything bigger? Yes, we worked under the microscope. Everyone um, used the same way? Do you get prescription ones for your eyes? Um, well, you can adjust them. So okay. they're, they're microscopes attached mm. to glasses. Amazing. Or in this case, we had the giant microscope come in. Help me out here. Are these silly questions? No, no. Okay. You know, it, it would be silly only if you're part of the profession. And, yeah, I should know. You know so so when, you're, when you're a surgeon and someone comes in, they're having a problem and they may have gone to, do you automatically get them into surgery or do you send them home if they don't need it? Absolutely. You want to send people home and, and first you try non-operative modalities. Um, what does that mean in meaning, English? Meaning you don't jump straight to surgery. You try other things that don't involve surgery. Um, so, so we, a patient would hope that they're going to a surgeon and the surgeon is going to say to them, you don't really need surgery. Have patience. This will heal on its own. Or if you do physical therapy, or let's try some uh, cortisone shots first, um, let's try other things first. Um, and it could be something as basic as, um, let's help you lose weight, because all that pressure on your knees with your knee pain mm -hmm. is from you being overweight. Interesting. So, But that's the beauty of being a doctor, is that you have a relationship with your patients, right? You, you're there... Um, in front of a human being, um, and for me, it was a, a very spiritual experience to to know that you're having this very intimate relationship with someone. That's great. This is being that you mentioned beauty. This is a business show. It's a fashion show. Very often, yes. Um, with Dr. Taryn Rose, known as Taryn Rose, entrepreneur, executive fashion designer we're going to come to that in a little bit and i find the, the medical part for you amazing i have another question though for you you feel you're creative in surgery is that where your creative bones if you will come from um no surgery didn't teach me creativity as much as it taught me to be prepared uh, before every case, um, I walk through exactly how I would approach the surgery, the, the size of the screws, the size of the plates, um, you know, the, the anatomical approach into the bone. So it taught me a great deal of discipline. It taught me how to be a leader. Um, but when you asked me earlier if I thought I was smart or special, I think that in 
my 20s and 30s, I started to see that I had a gift for being an entrepreneur. And I had a gift for seeing completely unrelated things and how they could come together to be something completely new. And that's how I created Tara and Rose. Well, you, I'm going to go there, I promise. <laughs> but before yeah. we do, uh -huh. um, when you're a doctor and you have a practice, you have to be an entrepreneur. You're running your own business. Right. Did you learn how to do that in school? No. And that's, uh, it's interesting you should mention that. Um, I was asked to come back to uh, help out with our alumni group. And one of the first things I pointed out was that it would be great if we had conferences for our residents to know what it's like to be in private practice after they finish. I didn't have a clue. No one ever talked to me. And what are the other options other than private practice? Um, as well as basic things like how to invest your money because you know, you, you've spent your entire 20s, you're now early 30s, and it's the first time you're making money. You know, I made forty thousand dollars a year. But you're also residency. hiring people and you're giving yeah. them jobs to help and, you. And you know, these days, unfortunately, there's less and less of hanging up your own shingles. They make it very difficult. So typically, you'll join an existing group, corporation, that have all the infrastructure together. But oh, you should, at minimum, I feel, know how to invest your own money. And, and understand of that. And I have to say, when I finished, it was the first time in my life where I had to deal with money. Do you like money? Um, I like the comforts that money can buy. I think that it's something... The peace of mind. Yes, yes, the, uh, the security. But I think you have to be careful to not make it your end all because it can consume someone. Um, so I'm not naive enough to say, oh, I don't need money. I think we, we all need a certain basic amount of security and comfort. Um, but beyond that, there's much more to life. And I have to say, I was never the type of person who woke up and said, I've got to make money today. Um, this is how I'm going to do it. I always focus on how can I create a better product? How can I create a better experience for the customers? That was always my focus. That's and, then great. The, and the money came. Look, this is a business show, and this is a show about being <laughs> successful, and I've never apologized for success or for trying to teach people. I think people can be their best. Uh, and I try and focus on how people can be their best. In fact, I have a motto on the show that packaging yourself is as important as the products you package. Might not be fair how you look, but it matters. People look at you, they make judgments. Doesn't mean we're all beautiful or tall or we, you know, we know what to do, but you can learn how to do what's best for yourself. Exactly. And with that in mind, mm -hmm. Dr. Taryn Rose, I'm gonna take a break now. When we come back, we're gonna talk about you, the entrepreneur, and the fashion business.